our way to a very warm good afternoon to you. Please update us on what has been happening today and what is expected to happen later. All righty then, it seems like we've just lost our way to there, but we do promise that we'll get back to that commemoration. Our way to, of course, our SABC News reporter, who'll be updating us, of course, on the Bishop Massacre. I understand, our way to, that you are back. Thank you so much for staying on the line. Um, our way to, I was just asking you before we broke there that what has been happening um, throughout the day and what can we expect to happen a little bit later still? Well, what I can tell you is that it was exactly on a Monday, 23 years ago, when the incident took place. Uh, today, we saw the marchers marching from Victoria grounds, following the actual route that was taken uh, in 1992, coming to the Bishop Stadium. Now, we are outside the Bishop Memorial Massacre, Bishop Massacre Memorial site, um, where the Deputy President, Cyril Ramaphosa, has just been to lay some roots um, in, in the memory of those that passed away. About 29 people passed away on the day, and 28 of those were marchers, and it was also one soldier. And they were marching, asking then um, President of the Siskai, the, the homeland Siskai, or Prikadia Opatkozo, to step down, and uh, they wanted an administration that could bring democracy to the Siskai. Our way to, you did mention that the deputy president um, is expected to attend. Um, as a matter of fact, he's already there uh, laying wreaths. What do the wreaths actually uh, symbolize, our way to? He spoke about the significance and, and the lives that were lost on the day and how important it is for South Africans to actually remember those people. Those people should remain in the memories. As a result, the site behind me is part of the heritage, it is part of the world heritage. Um, it's, it's still being built, it's, it's, it's not completed yet. But he also spoke to the Deputy President about his personal feelings because he was one of the leaders that was here on this day together with um, the SACPC General, uh, General Secretary Chris Arnie and Steve Trett as well as Amron Castles. So they were the leaders that were leading the march on the specific day. And he told us that walking on that route brought back the sad memories. Um, he started to think about uh, the, those fallen heroes and, and also how he was here when the incident happened and seeing people being shot and people dying. Do we know it all the way to what time the Deputy President is expected to address the crowd? Can you please repeat that? Do we know at all what time um, the deputy president is expected to address the crowd? The deputy president will address the rally um, from one, around 10 past 1 up until 5 to 2. That's the expected time. But they did set a bit later than the scheduled time. So it might be a bit later than that. Right, so take me through some of the dignitaries that you have seen or that are expected, of course, to be attending today's commemoration, please. Mostly the, the, the MECs from um, the, the Eastern Cape, and we've also seen uh, Minister Pam Trete as well. And you remember, her husband was one of the people that was leading this march. We've also seen the, the Premier of the Eastern Cape, Pumola uh, Maswale, as well. But uh, most importantly, the families um, of, of, the, of those that have been honored are also here, and the Deputy President did meet with them prior to coming to the site where he had an engagement and talking to them about the assistance that the, 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 the government um, will, will give those families because some of the people that died on the day were breadwinners. But he, although they didn't tell us more about what assistance they're offering at this stage, they did say that they're a group negotiating with the families. Now, you did mention that some of the people that lost their lives on that fateful day or where two were breadwinners. There were, you know, family members that contributed financially um, in the household. Have you spoken to some of the family members about how this day perhaps brings back um, those sad memories of what happened back in 1992? At the moment, we haven't really spoken to any one of the families, but however, we have spoken to a journalist um, that was here during the time covering stories and he told us about how difficult it was for them as well because he says when, he, when they got to the Grey Hospital, which is down the road from here, and they started seeing dead people and they started seeing people dying, that they actually realized that this was not an ordinary march, but it was a war against the people. The, 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 the Siskayan government was fighting with the people. And oh, wait, so let me take it back then to government. I understand that you had a conversation um, with the deputy president. How important is it then for government to commemorate this day? How important is it for government to reflect on you know, the events that took place on this day and to ensure that they do better and that this never happens in the country ever again? 
Well, um, the deputy president did say that when, when they do events such as this one, where they commemorate people, they also reflect on modern day and what the department is doing, what the government is actually doing now. And they're saying that it is the people that actually sacrificed their life that died here, to not die for things such as corruption that we're seeing today. And that South Africans should actually be not in a fight against um, things like corruption. All right, thank you so much. Over to Sopa, our SABC News reporter, of course, from Bisho, just taking us through the 1992 Bisho commemoration currently taking place in um, Bisho. I understand uh, the Deputy President, Cyril Ramaphosa, is expected to take to the podium and address the crowd at around 1 p.m. this afternoon. And, of course, to just give uh, messages of condolences and messages that are comforting to the family members that are directly affected by those that they have loved.